I'm Susan McGinnis in the Energy News Center. A lot of the focus on oil right now is centered in the Gulf of Mexico, but price-wise so far it was a strong week for oil, and that was thanks to encouraging economic news and a rising euro. Also, natural gas prices continued their rise, although storage uh, numbers came in showing it still holds more natural gas than was predicted. With us now for a little bit more insight into oil and gas is Elliot Yu from the Energy Strategist and the Energy Letter. Hi, Elliot. Hi. Welcome back. I wanted to ask you first about the Gulf, um, the U.S. suspension of, of new deep water drilling. What impact do you think this will have on, on drilling and on prices? It really depends upon how long it stays. Um, you know, if they continue to extend it, you know, month by month uh, past uh, the beginning of next year, I think it could have a much more profound impact. Um, the thing is they're allowing existing drilling projects to go ahead, but they're not permitting new projects. Uh, so there are a lot of projects ongoing right now. Those are going to carry on uh, even with the moratorium in place. Problem's going to come as those producers try to permit new wells, and that would be a much bigger problem if it carries on into next year. Okay, how about tankers? Um, what about the possibility of, of um, the interference with tankers because the U.S. imports so much of its oil and a lot of it comes in through Louisiana and Texas? Uh, what do you see there as the impact? I think that is a concern, although one thing that I think is very interesting is that if you look at tanker fixtures out of the Middle East, Persian Gulf area, almost all of them are going uh, east uh, towards China and the Far East. Uh, very, few, very, very few are coming to the U.S. Gulf Coast and the U.S. Uh, West Coast. And I think that's because our storage situation here in the United States for oil is, is, pretty, is pretty healthy right now. We have tons of oil in storage. Uh, we have plenty of gasoline in storage. Um, so I think most of the tankers are really heading elsewhere where the demand is strong and, and, and you know, the inventory situation isn't quite as healthy. So that could be an issue if um, those inventories really start to draw down over the course of the summer and we need to start importing more oil. But right now, um, you know, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect on the U.S. specifically. Uh, but again, I mean, it's interesting that all those tankers are heading east. It suggests that maybe China isn't really slowing down in terms of oil, oil demand so much. Okay. How about um, hurricane season? It's now predicted to be quite severe. What impact do you see? Uh, well, you know, hurricane season can have a, a profound impact, uh, particularly on natural gas prices short term. Uh, we get a lot, still get a lot of natural gas production, especially from the shallow water, uh, if that has to be shut in for periods of time. Uh, the other effect would be on the refining side. Um, you know, if, if you have to shut down a bunch of refineries, most of our refining capacity in the U.S. is based along the Gulf Coast somewhere. If you have to shut that down uh, for a period of time, you know, that can have a major impact on gasoline prices. You know, but again, you know, we are in a fairly healthy situation in the U.S. right now in terms of inventories of gasoline and oil and storage. So I wouldn't expect it to have as much of an effect on refined products prices and oil prices as it might have, say, a few years ago when, when inventories were much tighter. Okay, and, and just talk about natural gas a bit. Uh, futures were up uh, this past week the most in a couple of weeks, um, even though supplies rose a bit more than expected. Yeah, I think there are a couple things going on with natural gas relative to oil. Uh, one is that uh, it's a much less crowded trade. Um, as you know, we kind of say on Wall Street is you know, that there are a lot of hedge funds that were stuck in oil. Uh, they were buying oil as a play both on a, a global recovery um, and on you know, just the momentum in that market up until the April highs. Now, since the April highs for the stock market and all these commodities, we've seen all the hedge funds, all the institutional players pull back on risk, and that hit oil pretty hard. Uh, you know, we saw oil go from the upper 80s to the, to the mid-60s. Uh, however, on the gas side, I don't think there were a lot of hedge funds and institutional players in gas. That's why prices were so depressed. There just wasn't a lot of momentum there. So we really didn't see gas come down much at all mm. uh, alongside other uh, risky assets. In fact, it actually rallied a little bit from you know, the time of that high. So I think that's one aspect. There just aren't a lot of institutional players in natural gas, so it's not getting you know, hit back and forth quite as much as oil. Uh, the other thing, again, is you know, the idea that, um, yes, you know, natural gas and storage is, 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 bu is building uh, you know, pretty rapidly, uh, but we are seeing a recovery in demand as well. Um, you know, we're seeing very, very strong industrial demand. Uh, some months, uh, recent months, has actually been higher than it was pre-crisis. Uh, we're probably going to see a very strong uh, summer uh, in terms of uh, electricity consumption. It's projected to be very hot. That's one of the reasons why the hurricane season is, is projected to be so strong. And that's going to mean higher electricity demand, and we're seeing a lot of switching from coal to natural gas. Okay, and the rig count is up as well. The rig count is up as well, although a lot of that rig count is really going towards, it's not really targeting natural gas per se. It's targeting more the natural gas liquid side of the equation, so your ethane, your propane, your butane. Um, ethane in particular is used as a feedstock for ethylene, which is basically the building block of all plastics and all sorts of petrochemicals. You, know, you can make it from ethane, which is a natural gas liquid, or you can make it from naphtha, which is a crude oil derived product. Obviously, if you have that choice, you're going to go for the ethane because it's much, much cheaper. So we are seeing very, very strong demand for natural gas liquids right now. 
um, you know, they, they trade typically at around 60% of a barrel of crude oil. So if you think about that, if you have a natural gas supply, like say in the Marcellus, which tends to be uh, rich in natural gas liquids, you're probably earning north of $7 per thousand cubic feet right now, rather than, you know, 4 or 4.25. Right. Four. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Elliot Gu from the Energy Strategist, thank you. Thanks for having me. And I'm Susan McGinnis with Clean Skies News.